Welcome to the February 2007 Night Sky Podcast from Imaginova Studios. I'm your host, Herb Kohler. February, which is derived from the Latin word for purification, is the shortest month of the year. And as you know, February is the only month that can have either 28 or 29 days. This year, February has only 28 days, because 2007 is not a leap year. Before we get to this month's celestial events, let me share with you this amazing image taken by the space probe Cassini last July. The image shows radar evidence of what are probably lakes of liquid methane on the surface of Titan, Saturn's largest moon. This makes Titan and the Earth the only two bodies in the solar system known to have lakes. But before you pack your bathing suit, please be aware that the temperature in Titan rarely gets above minus 290 degrees Fahrenheit. That's the same as minus 180 degrees Celsius. Meanwhile, back on a much warmer Earth, we are treated to several spectacles this month. Unfortunately, the brilliant comet McNaught has departed, and some of us never got the chance to see it. If you didn't either, you'll have to be satisfied with pictures like these, taken by folks who were lucky enough to have clear skies. According to some accounts, this was the brightest comet in the last 50 years or so. It would have been quite a spectacle had it been placed in a dark night sky. However, we can see Saturn and the Moon on February the 2nd, Venus, Mercury and Uranus on February the 7th, and Venus and the Moon on February the 19th. We'll also watch the Moon near the Pleiades again on February the 23rd. As the sky darkens in the evening of February the 2nd, look along the northeastern horizon just after 6 p.m. Eastern Time. Watch the full moon rising along with a bright star-like companion to the upper right. As this pair rises higher in the sky, the steady light of the companion hints that it's not a star at all. Indeed, as any small telescope will verify, it's the planet Saturn. If you're using a telescope, make sure you take the time to examine Saturn's magnificent ring system. Look at the pair again a few hours later. As we go forward in time, can you see that the separation between the two has more than doubled? Last month I challenged you to find the planet Uranus, and in December I challenged you to find Mercury. If you didn't take me up on these challenges, you'll get another chance on February the 7th to see both of these planets. Start around 6 p.m., looking about 15 degrees above the southwestern horizon. You should be able to spot the brilliant Venus quite easily. Below and to the left, the brightest object is the planet Mercury. Less than a degree to the right of Venus lies Uranus. But you may have to wait a little until it gets darker and use binoculars to spot this gas giant. Nine days later, on February the 19th, the crescent moon, less than three days old, joins our sister planet in the western sky. See if you can spot any details on a dark part of the moon, illuminated only by Earthshine, which is sunlight reflected by the Earth. Speaking of the moon, do you remember the moon's encounter with the Pleiades in December? Well, on February the 23rd, the first quarter moon pays another visit to the star cluster. Passing just north of the Pleiades, high above the southwestern horizon, you can look for this encounter as soon as the sky gets dark enough. This is also a good chance to see how fast the moon travels against the background of the stars. By 11 p.m., it is noticeably west of the cluster. Using binoculars will make viewing this event a little more enjoyable. And now for this month's challenge. On February the 10th, the planet Saturn is in opposition to the Sun, which means it rises at sunset and is observable all night. But spotting Saturn is easy. The challenge is to see Saturn's largest moon, Titan. No, you won't be able to see the methane lakes the Cassini photographed. As it is, you'll need a small telescope to see Titan at all. But on February the 10th, and again on the 14th, Titan is far enough away from the planet's glare to make spotting it fairly easy. The actual view you will see depends on when you observe and on your equipment. Refractor and Cassegrain telescopes will produce an image that is upside down when used without a diagonal. When a diagonal is used, the image will be corrected right side up. 
but backwards from left to right. It will look like trying to read a sign in a mirror. Remember in your telescope an equal number of reflections turns the image upside down. An odd number of reflections turns the image left to right. In addition to Titan, you might also see some of Saturn's other moons. Make a simple sketch and check again in a few days to see which star-like objects have changed positions. Oh, and while you're there, don't forget to enjoy Saturn's beautiful ring system once again. Well, that's all for this month. As always, clear skies and good observing.